Welcome to Professor Ortlieb's Blue Book Podcast, a series of podcasts designed to teach 1L students the basics of Blue Book Citation. In this episode, we will continue to discuss statutory cites, in particular, citation for state statutes and special citation forms for certain specific statutes and rules. A citation to a state statute has many of the same types of components as a federal statute site. But because each state chooses the structure of its statutory code, there can be significant differences in form from state to state. In short, state statute sites are not as uniform as, say, state case sites. In order to produce a blue book site for a state statute, your new best friend, if it isn't already, is Table T1. More specifically, Table T1.3 contains the guides to citing state statutes. You'll find the forms for a particular state's statutes after the court and reporter information for a state. T1.3 will tell you the title of the state's official and unofficial codes. It will also give you the abbreviation for each code. Where relevant, it will give you the abbreviation for the subject in the subject codes. It will also show you how to format your sections. Finally, it will give you the information for your date and publisher parenthetical. Unlike federal code sections, state code sections do need a date within this parenthetical. Let's take a look at two different states to see how statute information can vary. The first state we'll look at is New York, which has a subject code. You'll recall that the U.S. code is organized by subject 2, but instead of incorporating subjects by words, it replaces the words with a title number. Well, in New York, the subject is printed as part of the site, instead of being replaced by other numbers or coordinates. You can tell whether a state has a subject code by looking at the statutory compilation section of the jurisdiction in T1.3. You can see here at the red arrow, the abbreviation guide lets you know that you need to insert a subject by placing subject inside chevrons or angle brackets. The blue book flags all items that need to be filled in by printing them in blue. The chevrons or angle brackets do not get reproduced in the site. Instead, they're there as a signal to you that you need to add something there. If I needed to cite to the banking code in New York, I simply keep reading in T1.3 to find the abbreviations for my subject. I can see that the abbreviation for banking is the full word banking. You'll notice that the blue book uses large and small caps in the subject abbreviations. Under the blue pages, you can either use ordinary type or large and small caps. You should not use all caps. In contrast to New York, let's take a look at Illinois, which does not incorporate subjects into the code sites. Instead, the Illinois statutes are organized by chapter number and require you to include the act number and section number surrounding the abbreviation for the code. You can see more clearly what large and small caps looks like here. Again, this optional for ordinary memos and court documents. If you do not use large and small caps, you should use ordinary type. When you look at T1.3, without the context of an actual statute, it may seem really daunting to figure out what numbers go where into your site. But don't worry. When you're looking at an actual print of a statute, the formats that you see in T1.3 will make much more sense. Just as we provide pin sites in our case citations, we want to be as precise as possible with our statute sites. Therefore, we may need to cite specific subsections or section spans. Be as specific as possible following the conventions of the jurisdiction for adding subsections. In Illinois, adding subsections is done the same way it is with the federal code, where subsections are added to the end of the section number. This site would direct the reader to look at section 2-18, subsection A sub subsection 3. Just as we indicated scattered pages in a case site, we indicate scattered sections in a statute by separating the sections with a comma. This site would call the reader to look at sections 2-18, 2-20, and 2-29 in the Juvenile Court Act. Finally, just as we indicate a span of pages in a case site, we can also indicate a span of sections or subsections within a statute site. Where a jurisdiction includes dashes or hyphens in its ordinary citation form, replace the dash with the word to. 
Illinois is a jurisdiction with those internal dashes in its form. The site here directs the reader to consider sections 2-18 through 2-20. New York, on the other hand, does not include internal dashes, so you may use your dash to indicate the span of sections. Note how you retain the period before the 08 here, so your reader can understand that you are referencing sections 190.05 through 190.08. Of course, state statutes, statutes also have short forms. You can find a guide to short form citation for state statutes in 12.10. Remember that the state short forms are a bit trickier because there's so much difference from state to state. So let's take a look at Illinois and work through a couple of examples. Let's assume that our last site was to 705 ILCOMPSTAT 405 2-18. We could have short forms in a few different forms. What would the site be if the next sentence was citing the exact same provision, that is 2-18? Well, that one is easy. It's a simple id, of course. But what if you're going to cite a different act and section number now? In other words, what happens if you're still in the same chapter, but now in a different act and section number? Well, You'll look back at T1.3 to make sure you understand what the different numbered components are called in the statutory scheme, and you'll give your reader the site from the point it changed from your last site. So here, I'm indicating to my reader that this last sentence is referring to 705 IL COMP STAT 410-2-3. I've switched out of Act 405 into Act 410. If, on the other hand, I've only switched to a new section, rather than switching act and section, my site could look like this, id, section 2-3, or this, simply section 2-3. Note, the only time the section symbol will appear in an Illinois statute site is where the section is only component being conveyed. Otherwise, we do not insert a section symbol into our site. How do I know this? T1.3 told me so. Finally, don't forget that sometimes we need to include more information in our sites to make it easier for our reader to find and follow our citation pattern. In this last example, I've stayed in the same chapter as my last site, but changed act and section numbers. Nevertheless, I included the chapter number and code abbreviation because my reader might not be able to find that information so easily. It may have been quite a while since I last referred to the chapter number explicitly. So to make things easier for my reader, I gave a fuller site. With state statutes, you'll need to use your best judgment and help local custom guide you. So on that note, let's talk a little bit about the limits of the Blue Book. Remember that it is written by law review editors and its primary audience is an academic one. Therefore, it will not necessarily reflect the local rules or practices. And nowhere is that more true than in Illinois. Under the Blue Book, we cite to the Illinois Code by printing out Il Comp Stat. But in practice, I have yet to meet a single person who cites this in this fashion in an Illinois law office. Instead, we usually use ILCS, just as you find it abbreviated in most sources with the Illinois Code. We don't even use periods in the abbreviation. So, use your Blue Book with care. Local rules and local custom may supersede Blue Book in practice. And when doing Blue Book homework, of course, the Blue Book can be your ultimate authority. But in practice, you'll need to look beyond it. So, what do you do with a code that you found online? After all, most of us do most of our legal research online now. Well, almost every state does place a copy of its code online. But for some, the online code is, or the online version, is actually the official code. In others, the code is not authentic, official, or an exact copy of the official code. Where the online version you have is authentic, official, or exact, you can cite to it as though it is the print version. So what about Illinois? 
While the Illinois General Assembly does have the code online on its website, it also contains this disclaimer. The disclaimer tells that us that it is not official and we cannot treat it as such. It doesn't mean that we can't use it for our sites, but if we do use it, we need to append the web address to our site. Citing to the online version of Section 1 of the Adoption Act would therefore look like this. For more information on citing electronic statutory sources, including citing statutes that you found on Westlaw or Lexis, please see Rule 12.5. Let's take a look at another state. What about Connecticut? So the only way to know whether a state statute online is official or an exact or authentic copy is to search for it on the web and look for a disclaimer. When pulled up the Connecticut code, we can find that there's actually no such disclaimer. This means that you can cite to this online source as though it's the print source of the Connecticut code with no web address needed for your citation. You would use the date indicated on the source for your date parenthetical. Lastly, you should know about a few statutory or statute-like resources that have their own special format. These special sources include the Internal Revenue Code, which can be found in Rule 12.9.1, the Rules of Evidence, the Rules of Procedure, and other court rules. They have their own Blue Book Rule as well, and that can be found in Rule 12.9.3. Model codes, restatements, and other similar statute-like sources are cited under the guidelines found in Rule 12.9.4. And finally, the ABA Code of Professional Responsibility is a model code, but it has its own citation rules. That can be found at 12.9.5. You've now completed the lessons on basic statutory citation and are ready to start your exercises. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or to a teaching assistant.